So the next bit of information we have was the first job of the Prophet The Prophet said, hadith is in Bukhari, so it is completely authentic. Allah never sent a Prophet except that he was a shepherd. So they said, not even you, O Messenger of Allah. So he said, yes, I was. I was a shepherd. And I used to tend to the flock of the people of Mecca in return for some qararit, some pennies. What are some of the wisdoms? Why would Allah Azza wa Jal do this? If Allah had willed, our Prophet Sallallahu would have been born in the lap of luxury. Sheep are very similar to men in that they need to be taken care of or else they're going to go astray. And every single animal has a personality. And the shepherd understands this personality that you need to treat every animal according to that animal's personality. Some sheep are stubborn, some are soft and gentle, right? Some, they know where they're going, others, they follow the pack. Some are the leaders, some are not. So the shepherd gets to understand each and every sheep in the flock. And he deals with every animal according to its personality. And this is what a leader needs to do. And this is what a Prophet of Allah needs to do. That they need to deal with every person according to their mizaj, according to their personality. In another few years, even a more famous incident occurred. And this is called the Hilf al-Fudul or the Hilf al-Mutayyabin. The treaty or the pact of Fudul, also called the treaty of Mutayyabin. And at this stage, the Prophet ﷺ is probably in his early 20s. What happened was, a person from the tribe of Zubayd, and Zubayd is a tribe in Yemen. And so the Yemenites, when you're in Mecca, the people did not consider this tribe to be as elite. They are a low-class tribe. and they're very far away. So when you're far away, what this means is you don't have people willing to fight for you, right? So what happens? This person from the tribe of Zubayd sold an item before Hajj. He's come as a merchant. He's brought his leather, he's brought his good. That's how you get your money. And he sold a number of items to Al-As ibn Wa'il, the father of Amr ibn Al-As. And Al-As ibn Al-Wa'il, he is a chieftain, he's a politician, he's a career statesman in the Quraysh, and he's a rich businessman. He sold it to him before Hajj. And Al-As said, I'll give you the money after Hajj before you go back to Yemen. Come to me after and I'll give it to you. So he goes, okay, fine. I can wait that long. I don't need it now. I need it back in Yemen. So he performs the Hajj and then he says, I need my money. Al-As says, come back tomorrow. So he comes back tomorrow. Al-As says, come back tomorrow again. Comes back tomorrow. And then he continues doing this until he realizes that he's not going to get his money back. And so this person goes to the other sub-tribes. And everyone makes an excuse. Why? Because Al-As ibn Wa'il is a politician. He is rich. He is a leader. And therefore, feeling completely trapped and not having any other outlet, he decided to make this a public issue. What did they do in those days? They would write poems. And so one day, when everybody is in front of the Kaaba, which is basically everybody would gather around Asr time, all the people of Mecca would now come and they would say this is a social place as well. He now comes and he says out loud his poem that he has compiled. So he says, Ya ala fihrin, O tribe of Fihr, O Quraysh, limadlumin bita'atahu. I am a one who has been unjustly treated because of my merchandise. Bibatni Makkata. I am in the valley of Makkata. Na iddari wal nafari. Far away from my home and far away from people to protect me. Wa muhrimun. I'm still in my ihram. Ash'ath. My hair has not been combed because he's an ihram. Lam yaqdi umratahu. I haven't even finished my umrah. Ya lil rijali. Where are my men to help me? Wa bayna al hijri wal hajari. Between the hijr, the maqam Ibrahim, and the hajar, the stone, you are doing this to me. Inna al haram li man tammat karamatuhu. The true haram belongs to those who are noble. Wa la haram li thawb al ghadir al fajri. There is no sanctity to the one who wears a thawb. Most likely there was a thawb in there involved as well. Who wears a thawb while he is a cheat and a steal and a lowly person. So the news spread like wildfire. And Az Zubayr ibn Abdul Muttalib, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi elder uncle, Az Zubayr ibn Abdul Muttalib, heard of this. And he said, we have to do something about this. This is not going to go on anymore. And he convened a gathering of all of the senior members of the Quraysh in the house of somebody whose name you should memorize. He comes up in Sira over and over again. Abdullah ibn Jud'an. And here is where they agreed to a pact, a treaty. They would side with the oppressed against the oppressor regardless of which tribe the oppressor belonged to. And they said even if 
the one who is shown injustice is from a faraway tribe and the oppressor is from a Quraysh sub-tribe, we will side with the one who has been oppressed and we will get his full right from the oppressor. And they all went in front of the Kaaba and they publicly announced this and they signed their names on a document. Now, there is no document, there is no signature. What do you do in those days? You dip your hands in perfume and you put that perfume on the Kaaba on the same place. Everybody puts it on the same place. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. The Prophet ﷺ said, I witnessed in the house of Abdullah ibn Jud'an a treaty that were I asked to uphold it even in Islam, I would do so. If I were to ask to follow the treaty even now, I would do so. And I would not be willing to give up my place for a lot of red camels. Meaning, if you were to tell me, if you were to give me a lot of money and I were not present at that treaty, I would not do so. I would not be willing to do so. In that treaty, he's saying, they all agreed that the rights would be given back to the ones who deserve them and that no oppressor would have the upper hand over the one who was oppressed.